So uh, part of this, uh, the, the, the sprint that's going to start uh, today uh, will be that uh, you'll be asked to add a, um, a relational database to your, uh, to your project. And I have here a couple of uh, slides that walk you through that process. And so the idea would be that uh, you will have a uh, local database, uh, presumably a uh, local MySQL database running locally on your machine. And your project can be configured to point to that local database. And you would do all your local development uh, using this local database. Uh, once, uh, once you're ready and, um, and you're ready to create a, a, a pull request, uh, you, would, um, you would make all the changes that you need to the remote database right, to make sure that it has a correct uh, SQL and whatnot. Uh, and once, uh, once it, it uh, deploys to, to, um, to production, that once somebody merges it for you, the, uh, you would then be you would test it uh, using the remote database. Right? You would not use the remote database for development. You would only use it for, only for production when, when, it, when this goes uh, pushed out to the uh, to remote server. So, so for all development, use the local database. Uh, when you push it, uh, then configure your project to use the remote database. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of uh, databases, um, uh, relational databases, uh, that uh, provide a free tier in, uh, on Heroku. Uh, there's a ClearDB, there's a, a JAWS DB, there's a couple there. Uh, those, these are the, um, the ones that are somewhat easier to, to configure. Uh, once, you, uh, once you configure them, they uh, will create, a, um, they'll create some environment variables locally on, um, on, on the remote Heroku instance, which you can then copy the, uh, the, the password and the, the URL uh, from, the, from the remote server, and because you'll need that to be able to connect and test it uh, locally on your machine. Um, if you go to your, uh, your, to your Heroku environment, uh, have been here a while. Is that it? No. Is that it? No, that's not it. Maybe, maybe not. Just thinking. Anyway, well, while that's loading, uh, the, um, the environment variables that it creates on the remote server, you'll need to copy them in your local project. Your local project, uh, to, to point it to a database, is, uh, is configured in, my, in, in, a, in a Spring project. It's configured under the resources directory. If you go under Java um, source main resources, under there, there'll be a file that was created for you, which will be empty for you. It'll be uh, it will be called application.properties. It will be em empty. Uh, for instance, this is for section 3, but for section 2, for instance, it's empty. There's nothing there. Um, and uh, this is copied straight from the, uh, from the, from the uh, slideshow. Uh, if, you, if you copy it, oops, let's copy that. Copy, and you go to your local application properties. Uh, there, are several f there are several properties here that configure your local database connection. Uh, one of them is the uh, URL to connect to the remote to the server to the database server, and the other two are username and password. Okay, uh, this is uh, th you should configure this in your uh, in your local uh, database. Uh, for instance, I have it here for uh, SPS3. Uh, we can create one for this for this course, and this will be CS4500 uh, underscore SP19 underscore section two. Apply. Uh, that will create the uh, the the uh, there it is. The, uh, if you click, if you double click it, it'll, it'll be it'll become the uh, the default schema. Uh, under that schema, notice that there are no tables whatsoever, and we can uh, connect to it by pointing the uh, the application that properties this uh, this project to that to that database. So it'll be section two. Um, you can create users here, users and privileges, and you can create new users. Uh, I created one for this course, CS4500. I gave the same password just, just to make it easier on myself. Uh, so there we go, the username and password. Um, a couple of other 
a couple other aspects is that we're going to be using a technology called JPA, Java Persistence API. Anybody play around with JPA before? Okay, a few of you. Uh, JPA is a mechanism in Java that allows you to uh, map any uh, object, any Java class, right, to an equivalent table, right? That uh, it um, it'll parse your Java class and will make by default it'll take the the name of the class and it'll create a table for you. And all the fields in there, username, password, last name, first name, whatnot, it'll create fields for you in a in a, um, in an equivalent uh, SQL table, right? And this will happen automatically uh, for you. It, it uses a technology. Um, that's uh, uh, called Hibernate. Hibernate is, uh, was one of the first folks that, uh, that uh, was promoting uh, this, uh, this technology as an alternative to Java's uh, EJBs. I, I don't know if anybody had, a, had the unfortunate uh, chance of playing around with EJBs. Uh, but Hibernate was a much better solution that uh, came around at the turn of the century, and it became very popular in, in, the, in, in the open source. Uh, and since then, JPA has borrowed a lot of from open source and they made it a, a standard now. Uh, anyway, um, JPA uh, allows you to configure all sorts of things. Uh, what, do you want to do, uh, what do you want JPA to do for you? Do you want it to create the database for you automatically? Meaning, if you have, a, the, if you have these Java classes, do you want it to create all the tables for you? You can you can configure it to create the 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 um the all the all the schema for you all the database uh, tables for you. Uh, do you want it to only update, meaning the database already exists, but it'll handle all modifications of adding a column or re renaming a table, but it won't generate the entire thing for you, right? Or none, because I don't want you to do anything, right? I will create the database form uh, on my own by hand. Uh, you know, I don't want you to do it anything f uh, for me. Uh, so while we develop, as, as developers, update is a good, is a good option, uh, meaning create the first database and then handle any modifications as we go. But once, we, once the, the product ships, you know, we would turn it off and say, do not, data, do not generate the database for us. This is going to go to production. The tables are all done. The fields are all done. I'm finished. I'm not in development mode anymore. Don't, ge don't mock around with the database anymore. Uh, but as developers, Update is a good is a good option for now. Uh, also for for um, for debugging, uh, just to see what uh, what the JPA the the SQL that is using to talk to the database, it can print it out in the console so you can see exactly what it's doing. All the inserts, all the all the creates, uh, all the updates, or the delete commands that it's sending to the remote database, you can you can see it in the console as it generates. So it can it can show the the SQL. It can format it for you, to, you know, adding uh, some uh, white spaces so you can see the actual commands. Uh, it'll even add all, uh, comments in there, and, and it'll do tracing as it uh, interacts with the database. Uh, so, so yeah, so we, we have here the, uh, the, the project. And, uh, and, and uh, using JPA is fairly simple. You, um, you can, um, uh, you can uh, declare the, uh, the, the data model, the Java data model that you want to map to the remote database. And you can uh, configure uh, this uh, you know, just using plain old Java, Java classes. So for instance, here we have the, the user that we've been playing around for uh, the last couple weeks. Uh, this is from section three, but from what we have locally in our, in our uh, example here, we have uh, models, here. there's user. This, this is a plain Java uh, user, right, which is, has not yet been mapped to a uh, relational table. Right? But we can map it very easily by uh, annotating it as an entity. OK. Uh, and it's not picking it up. Why you're not picking it up? Oh, another couple of things that need to, that need to happen. Um, to, for, to get JPA up and running, uh, we need to install the libraries that implement uh, JPA. And to do that, we'll, we'll need to modify our POM file. Our POM file currently does not have any references to any JPA or data layer uh, mechanism. So we'll need to do that. And to, to turn that on, to download the libraries that we need, uh, we're going to copy and paste this, uh, these uh, POM uh, dependencies, these project dependencies. We're going to say, 
you know, download the libraries that Spring uses to talk to the data layer using JPA. Uh, and also, we'll need a driver that talks to MySQL locally. Right? And I'm using version 8, uh, MySQL version 8. Uh, I don't know if you might be using a newer or older version of MySQL. Depending on the, on the version of MySQL, you'll have to you know, play around with those uh, versions. Yes? I'm using version 8 locally in my machine. So if I, cop oops. If I copy that and I uh, bring it over to our POM file in section 2, we can add that dependency. There we go. And we can ask the, um, the IDE to, to build the, to update the local Maven project. It'll parse the POM file, it'll download any of the libraries uh, that uh, it might need. And it, with any luck, if we come here and do an update, let's see if we found it. It still can't find it. Uh, I'm sorry? I do. Um, Oh, sorry. Let me update it again. Uh, maybe, okay, all right, very good. Let's try it again. All right, now it's not found it, the library. Notice that it's, 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 uh, it's asking me, is that the entity that you want to uh, Declare yes, it's this one, Java X persistence. So the entire JPA library is under that particular package, Java X persistence. Okay, uh, so let's do that. It loads it. Very good. So now it uh, um, what it'll try to do is uh, is uh, it'll automatically map that user class to a user table. The user table does not exist. It doesn't currently exist under our under our schema. Notice that the table is empty. Uh, another, another thing that we'll need to do is to declare uh, how are we going to uniquely identify this, uh, this, uh, this, um, this instance, instances of the records, right? Anybody take 3200? Introduction to databases? All right, so, okay. so half of you. Uh, right, so we would declare here what do you, which field do you want to declare as a primary key, and for that we use the ID annotation. We're saying that that's, uh, that's our primary key. Uh, and also, um, we, can, we can configure saying that we don't want to handle the value of this primary key. Uh, let the database choose our primary key for us. Uh, so we can ask it to please generate, gen generate this for us, generated value, and uh, to use a particular strategy, to use the identity strategy, which basically will, in MySQL, that's implemented using auto increment, right? Meaning, the IDs will be one, two, three, four. It'll just increment uh, on and on and on. Now this is this is different for dif different vendors. In MySQL, is you know starts at one and then increments to infin infinity. If you're using JAWS uh, DB or ClearDB, uh, they might start at ten and then twenty, thirty, forty. Each database will have its own little quirks. It's irrelevant to us, right? The actual value of the ID is irrelevant to us. Okay, that's why we're delegating it to a database. Right, to, to come up with this, the, these unique identifiers for us. All right, so, so we're all set. We can, um, we can compile this. Where are we? So we can go to CS4500, and we can go to 2019. We can go to Section 2, uh, and we can go to here, and we can do a Maven, clean, install. No, if I type it right. Okay, notice that it, uh, it, it, it sent a, uh, a create command to a database. You saw that? It went, went quickly. But notice that it uh, generated a, a, a command to the database right, to, to map that Java class to a database, to a table. And, uh, it used the name of the class as, a, as the name of the table. Uh, it um, uh, ID. Uh, also notice that th that's the primary key that I chose. And the first name, notice the naming convention. In, uh, in, in Java, we use the naming convention that is camel case. See that? Uh, but on SQL, uh, case is irrelevant. Uh, so so to, to make this a little better, better readable, oops, to, to make it better readable, it, uh, it uh, replaced the capital N with underscore N. So that, 
That's a, that's a common naming convention in the, in the relational database world. So it did that for us. It, by default, it chooses the var chart to be 255. We can override all these things from Java, but there is a default. All right, so let's, let's leave the default. Uh, we can go to the database, see uh, if we can refresh this. And notice that there it is. There's our user table. See that? Everybody okay? All right. Uh, the other, the other uh, thing that uh, you, you'll be asked to do is to, you know, different teams will handle different, different um, uh, data models, right? Team one will, do, will work with users. Team two will work with services. Team three will work with service uh, categories. And you'll do something similar for each one of these. Yes? Uh, the other thing that you'll, need to, that you'll be asked to do is to create repositories. So a repository is, um, is the magic that, uh, that allows you to, in, that, to interact with the database from, programmatically from Java. Right? It's, a, it's a, what, the, what implements all the, all the CRUD operations, all the standard CRUD operations uh, to, to, to uh, talk to, to the database. Uh, so, so let's uh, create here real quick a, um, a sample repository. So we'll say uh, class under, well, actually, no, let's, um, let's uh, create it under here. We'll say new class under a new package, and we'll put it under the repositories package, repository. And uh, we'll, this will be user repository. Typically, there will be one repository per table or per class that you want to store in the database. Right? So there will be a user repository, there will be a service repository for team two, there will be a service category repository for team three. So each team will have its own little repository. This has nothing to do with a source repository. Right? Repository as in data repository. Yes? Okay. So there's our um, repository. It's actually not a class, it's supposed to be an interface. Uh, and it um, is going to extend a CRUD repository. Let me make this a little readable. Repository. A CRUD repository is a class that already implements lot, uh, all, most of the CRUD operations. You know, create, read, update, and delete. Okay? Uh, so that uh, you just need to tell it what is it that you want to CRUD. It says, I want to CRUD users, or services, or user categories. Yes? It also needs to know what, what is the class of the primary key so they can uniquely identify each record as it creates or updates or deletes a particular record. Right? For me, for us, it's, these are integers. Integer. Everybody okay? That's all really what you need to do um, uh, for now. Uh, let's, uh, let's just play around with it. One of the things that uh, you, we might want to do is, well, what the, which the, the operator allows you to do, the CRUD re repository allows you to find all instances in the, in, the, in the table, or find it by ID, or create a brand new one, like inserts, right, or update an existing record. So all those CRUD operators are already built for you, most of them. Right, so let's play around with them. One way to play around with it that the assignment asks you to do is to uh, create a service that exposes the access to the user. We already played around with it a little bit in controllers last week with the user service, yes? Right? Uh, I'm going to move that user service. I'm going to move it in a, in a different um, directory, in a different package. A better package is to move and, um, wait, oh, I need to save a couple of things. Uh, save, save, and um, so yeah, so can, can I move this? Refactor, move, uh, update, da, 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 repository, I create a new package. Yeah, so the package will be service C. So all the services, everything that has a web service, right, will go under services. So I'm going to put it under there, and that's where I want to move it. All right, my service now lives under user service. Very good. So notice that the user service originally was retrieving data from this hard-coded array collection of users, yes? But now we actually have data. We're going to have some data in the database, yes? So instead of using this hard-coded content, we can blow this away now. 
and blows away. We don't need any, none of this hard-coded data. We're actually going to retrieve from the database. Uh, to do that, we're going to need the repository, because the repository is the one who actually talks to the database. So we're going to inject the database in here, the, uh, the repository, auto wire. So auto wire allows us to inject uh, dependencies. And we want to auto wire in here the user repository. Okay. Now we have the user repository. There it is. Uh, to find all users, we can use a repository. We can say user repository. Dot, notice that it has a couple functions here. Notice that it has find all. See that? It already has a finder that allows it to retrieve all the, all the, all the um, but it returns them in a different data, in, in, a, in a different format. It returns them as an iterable, iterable user. Uh, but we want a list user, so we'll need to cast it. We'll do some casting. Cast it to uh, list user. OK? Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, find user by ID. We can do, we're going to, what we can do is, again, we, we're going to use the repository. We're going to remove the, all, our, our old code. And we're going to return whatever the repository returns. The, uh, the CRUD, the um, user reposi repository. This find, notice there's a find by ID in there. See that? This is find by ID. So I can give it the user ID as an, as an, as an argument. Uh, now it's going gonna, it's gonna to complain saying that uh, actually what this returns to me is an optional. Optional means uh, this could be null, right? Meaning the record doesn't actually exist. You know, you gave me a bad ID, so it's, no, it's not there. So the way it handles this gracefully right, is that it packages inside of a nullable object, an object that can represent null other than the actual null. Okay, uh, just a, a uh, um, this allows you to do all sorts of validation and, and, and testing and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to be um, uh, lazy here, and I'm just going to do a get. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be optimistic that you're going to give me an actual ID. Right? If you gave me a bad ID, this would blow up. <laughs> right, so in, in, a, in a real environment, you would not do this. You would check to see, is it null, blah, 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 and you would handle it gracefully. I'm just going to be optimistic and just return the object itself, just get it. Yes? All right, excellent. So we're ready. We're ready. We, can, uh, we can try to start playing around with this. We can um, compile again. OK. Uh, and uh, we can um, we just run it. So Java. Uh, jar target um, CS4500 jar. All right, so that's uh, up and running. And it's mapped to the following URL API users. Uh, oops. Um, debug. Da, da, da. I might already have something running. All right, so it looks like 8080 is already taken somewhere. Um, yeah, yeah, something was already running there. That's fine. Let's run it again. Okay, looks like it's running. Uh, so we can, oh, this actually failed. All right, never mind. So we go localhost 8080 slash API users. OK, notice that it returns an empty array, meaning you don't have any users. And indeed, I don't. Right? If I go to a database and I do a query on my table, uh, indeed, I don't have any records there. So let's add some records. So let's see. We can um, say Alice Wonderland Alice password and Alice. So let's apply. It's going to insert. It inserts that particular record. If we go back and refresh, there's our Alice. Right? So it's able to retrieve all the instances that are in that record. Make sense? So this, this API will eventually, next week or the following week, it will be used by some user interface, right? which will query this data and will render something dynamically on the front end. Yes? 
Okay, we'll do that later when we introduce other skills as we go forward. Right? For, for this assignment, you're asked to, uh, to create what we just did. Right? Create the repository, create the service, uh, create the Java model, right? and, uh, and then um, um, copy. Right? If, we, if, we do a, if we go here to the user and ask for the create statement, it gives you the actual create statement that would be used for this, for this table. See that? Right? So one of the deliverables for this assignment is to copy this, this actual create statement and put it in a file. I believe um, we ask you to put it under, under resources, um, a directory under there, SQL, and in a file called uh, create users SQL and paste it in there. That's one of the deliverables, right? And same thing to, um, to do a couple inserts like we did. Oops. Uh, so select, uh, or there it is. There's, uh, there's, um, here are all the records. Create a, a, a few of these, okay? So maybe, maybe Bob, Marley, Bob, Bob, and Charlie, Brown, Charlie. When you apply, notice that it creates all these inserts. Well, one of the deliverables is to copy these, these inserts. Copy the inserts and, and save them. Put them in a, in a, in a uh, SQL file called insert. File insert users. Make sense? Right? So those deliverables were asking you to do this so that you, you start getting uh, 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 you know, uh, you know, up, to, um, up to speed with uh, interacting with databases and whatnot. So, so and those are all individual deliverables. Right? If you're doing the, if you're using the, if, you, if your responsibility is to create the uh, user model, you're also responsible for the create statement. If you're responsible for the, um, for the repository, then you're also rep responsible for the, all the inserts. Uh, if you're instead of responsible for the uh, web services, you're also responsible for the for the um, for for using uh, po Postman and creating several finders and find user by ID and create users and updates and deletes. Yes, right. I've shared all this with you in repository, so you should be able to just follow along and create your own. Make sense? All right. Awesome. Any questions?